Before Eddie speaks to us tonight, let me take just a moment to uh, introduce to you Eddie Clower. Uh, he's a friend of the Maplevale Congregation. He's been uh, coming on an annual basis for many years to report to us uh, on behalf of Truth For Today. Uh, Susan, his wife, is uh, here. Uh, I know she's somewhere. Uh, anyway, she's here. So uh, they're on their way to uh, McKinney, Texas. After uh, they leave here tonight, they'll be driving uh, toward um, uh, McKinney. I think it's McKinney, Texas, around Dallas. So we'll pray for them a safe uh, trip. Uh, they've got a few hours ahead of them, I know. But uh, Brother Clower is Professor Emeritus of Bible and Ministry at Harding University. That means he's retired, all right? And he devotes his time and energies to uh, Truth For Today and has for many, many years. Uh, they put out a periodical that looks like this. We get it, we get it here at Mabelvale. And they publish uh, the commentaries that uh, and each, each time a new commentary comes out, we receive a, a shipment here at Mabelvale that, and each of the adult teachers receive a copy of the commentaries as they are published. And uh, they help me. I suspect that they help all of the teachers here. And uh, it's, it's a marvelous thing indeed. Uh, I don't want to take too much of Eddie's time. Uh, he's here to speak to us on behalf of Truth For Today. If you'd like to contribute to the work, uh, there's a box that's available to, uh, for you to do that. I hope that you will. I will. hope you will too. Uh, Eddie Clore. Indeed. Susan and I really appreciate you, brethren, very much. We were talking in the car on our way over about how much we really enjoy coming to be with you. You've done everything we've asked you to do. You helped us once a year whenever I come down and speak to you. And you helped us with the commentary series. We didn't know if we could do this or not. But we started in about 2001. I called everybody I knew. I took the whole summer and called everybody that I knew. Dennis Gudledge and many others. And I asked them, is there any way that you could put this in your church library? Let us put you on auto send. Where when we come off the press with one, we just mail it out to you. And that's the way we have done the commentary set. We don't let anybody give toward the commentary set. Truth for Today is a nonprofit entity, and we give everything we do away. So we have sold the commentary set, and when the money comes in for that, we use that to do the next one. We have 52 done. We've got about 16 more to go. And then we think we'll call it quits on that commentary series. But it's the uh, most expansive commentary series that our brotherhood has ever done. If we can stay with it, then we believe other good things will happen in connection with it. There are three full accounts in the New Testament of the Great Commission. One in Matthew, one in Mark, one in Luke. John just barely mentions it. He says that Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, even so, I send you. John 20, verse 21. But the other three give us the details. And I wanted to go to one of them. I believe we'll put that on the board for you to read along with me, although I know you have it memorized. It's been a favorite over the years of all of us. But I wanted to show you something in this passage. Our Lord said, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. The old King James translation has to every creature. And may I say this, that's an interpretation, not a translation. The Greek word is creation. But the King James translation was seeking to show us the depth of this phrase. He's really talking about everybody on earth. Hebrews 2.9 says, He tasted of death for every man. So that helps us to understand what Jesus meant by this commission. 
He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. I would like to say this to us. Over the years, we've referred to this commission as the Great Commission. It is great. It is great in so many ways. But I really believe it would be better for us to refer to this commission as the Global Commission. I think if we refer to it as our Global Commission, it'll help us to understand that the only entity that Jesus has in the world for covering the whole world with the gospel is the church, is the body of Christ. Every member of the church is a missionary because he's been commissioned by this mission that Christ has announced in Mark 16, 15 through 16. There are three thoughts that I wanted to bring to your mind about this. First of all, he said, go, go. You can't fulfill this commission by sitting in a church building. Now, we worship in a church building. We worship in the assembly. But you can't fulfill the Great Commission by sitting in a church building. you got to go. You may go across the street. You may go across the field. You may uh, go across the counter talking to somebody when you're eating lunch. But you have to go. Number two, he said, I want you to go into all the world. I don't want you to leave any part of it out. I died for everybody in the world, and I want the gospel to go to everybody in the world. And then we have this phrase, to every creature that we get from the King James translation. So I'm contending that you call this the Global Commission and recognize that we haven't done our part until we are really thinking about reaching out into all the earth, trying to put together plans on how to reach out to everybody on earth. I do serve as an elder at the college church in Searcy, Arkansas. And one evening I was coming in to the elders meeting and Brother Mike Justice, who's a doctor, wonderful doctor, almost as good as that doctor right there, but they're fine, fine men. And he said, Eddie, what do we need? What do you think we ought to do? And I said, well, I think we ought to have a class that's really a think tank where we're gathering together to think, to think about what we can do to cover the earth with the gospel. I don't hear us even praying about it. I don't hear us even talking about it. But the Lord Jesus has given us the charge. You see that everybody on earth gets it. Here's what I'm going to do as I discuss our work for a few minutes. I want to show you what we're doing to try to reach out into all the earth. The first one does not reach out as far as the last two, but I'll just mention three. Three points that I'm going to make about truth for today. First of all, we are trying to raise up preachers. I taught at Harding for 42 years. One of my responsibilities for most of that time was to teach some of our preaching classes. And I enjoyed that. I think I've made a contribution to raising up some preachers here in America. We estimate that we have 5,000 full-time preachers in America. But now we need to concentrate on raising up preachers outside the United States of America. It seems to me that if deep within our hearts we're thinking about reaching out into all the earth, we will want to use the national preachers in order to do it. He's already over there. He already knows the language. If we're talking about another language being involved, he's already a Christian. He's setting on go. It seems to me that we would just regard this as a natural response to the Great Commission. We mail to 31,000 men every month. And even during the coronavirus, we did not miss a single month. This is the largest list of mailing to preachers that our brotherhood has. Now, I wish we had two or three others. We're not trying to compete with anybody, but it is a very good list. And we get it in to men way out in India, way out in other places, and help them a lot, I think. About 31,000. We did have to tailor it just a little bit during the coronavirus, but at least we kept up with the work. Now, these 31,000 men are in 140 nations. 
And remember that whenever you mail out into 140 nations, uh, you're mailing out to 140 different cultures. And that's hard to do. Every nation has its own culture. If you don't believe me, just go over there and see. You'll find them driving on the wrong side of the road. You'll find them driving in cars that has the steering wheel on the wrong side of the car. And they may just park on the sidewalk. That may be their place to park. In India, they eat everything with their fingers. Even rice. Every nation has its own culture. So how are you going to mail to men in 140 different cultures and do it effectively? Well, we don't know for sure, but we believe the best way. At this point in time, we believe the best way is to take a section of the Scriptures and exegete it. We believe in expository preaching or expository teaching. And we get some good men. We try to find men around the brotherhood who are really able to handle Hebrew and really able to handle Greek. And they help us with the exegetical work that we do. We try to do it as best we can. We try to leave out the big jawbreaker words because they're too hard to translate. And then we try to uh, translate this. And right now we're translating into uh, 12 different languages. Of the 31,000 men, we will translate their materials into uh, 12 different languages. We do translate into Chinese, but we don't prepare a book. We can't get the book in, so we just have them come to our website in order to get the information. Here's the thing. If you put together everything that we're doing, everything that the churches of Christ are doing, all the missionaries we send out, which would be about a thousand, all the campaigns we have are going back and forth overseas. You put together everything that we do, so far as we can tell, we're reaching out to about 20% of the earth's population. Now, it may be 25%. But remember, 80% of the people on earth speak other languages. And if all we ever do is to go out and teach English in some place, we're skipping about 80% of the earth's population. And be sure and recall this thought. November the 22nd, 2022. My wife, who's seated right over here, if you haven't spotted her yet, she's right over there. And I want you to meet her after our service is over. She called this to my attention. November the 22nd, 2022. The world changed. The church of Christ changed. You may not know about it, but it changed. The population of the earth came to be 8 billion. 8 billion. Way back there, whenever I started preaching, we might have had 3 billion. But now we've got 8 can you imagine the responsibility we have as the church of Christ to reach out to 8 billion people all around the earth? The world has changed. Let me say this too, that there are several reasons why we send paper out. There are arguments being made, well, we think you ought to be paperless. We think you ought to use internet. We think you ought to use cell phones. We think you ought to do it another way that's cheaper. Well, here would be some reasons why we have stuck with giving them a little pamphlet every month that would be equal to a book that would be 135 pages in length. We probably publish more than anybody in our brotherhood. Number one, it's good coverage. It's just good coverage. Sending out the books throughout the earth, raising the Christian literature level, of each of those countries, it's just good coverage. And that stays there a long, long time. Number two, it's more indigenous. The word indigenous refers to a congregation that's standing on its own two feet. It's overseas, but it's not dependent upon the money sent by American churches. It's indigenous. It's trying to do its own thing. It's trying to stand on its own two feet. And we want to encourage the preachers to be indigenous too. That's good for them to do that. We may not always be around. And America may not always be there with funds. 
We want them to stand on their own two feet, and this is a good way to help them to be indigenous. We send them the material. We can't read it for you. You'll have to read it. We can't build the sermons for you. You'll have to do that. We can't teach the Bible classes for you. You'll have to do that. But we'll try to get you the tools where you can do a better job in your preaching and teaching. It has a lasting impact. Every book we send overseas probably is going to live for maybe 20 years. It depends on how they take care of it. But remember, in most places overseas, a book like this is very precious to them. It's on 24-hour call. You can read a book anytime you want to. If you wake up in the middle of the night, you can read it. If you start on early in the morning, you can read it. Work on it in the afternoon, you can read it. It's on 24-hour call. It's good. That's good. And then there is a focus on teaching. Now, I know that you might want to talk to me about this, but listen to me carefully and try to listen to me with your heart. The Great Commission says nothing about benevolence. It says nothing about benevolence. But all three accounts of the Great Commission would be about teaching. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the commandments that I've given to you. Our responsibility is not to just get it in their head. We want to get it in their life. Teach them to observe all the commandments that I've given to you. So the printed page goes a long ways down the road of teaching. And then I think it's manageable. I believe we've got enough money to do it. We are a wealthy church. We're a wealthy people. Uh, You may want to argue with me about that. But you know how it was a few years ago. You know how it was when you grew up. We've got more to work with now. And if there's anybody on earth that ought to be able to manage this, it ought to be the Church of Christ in America. We have the funds. We've got to think. How can we do this? How can we get the materials over to the national preachers as well as we want to. Flavor Yankley died not too long ago. He was a man who studied church growth principles, especially among the churches of Christ. He lived in Searcy. I was pretty close to him. I talked with him often. And he told me that the research that he did indicated that the average member of the church of Christ gives only about 4%. Only about 4%. We are the ones who stand before others and say, now, you know, in the Old Testament, they were required to give 10%, but we're in the New Testament, and we're not required to do that. We're the ones who say that. We don't even give 10%. The average is not 10%. The average is down around 4%. If we could just get together and decide that we're going to double our contribution... We're going to give 8% instead of 4%. Think of what we could do with that additional 4% that we would have coming in. It is manageable. The question is not, can we evangelize the world? The question is, will we? Will we see the value of it? And will we be sacrificial in doing it? Well, that's the first thing. I know it's not covering all of the nations. The UN says there are 198 nations. We're just hundred and Forty nations, but uh, that's what we're doing regarding mailing to the preachers every month. Number two, we want to raise up teachers. And we believe this can be done. You have a wonderful preacher here. I love Dennis. I think he's one of our finest preachers. The finest thing you can do for Dennis is to be a teacher. To be a teacher yourself. Well, you say, I don't know how to do it. Yes, we can tell you how to do it. You can do it. You can be a teacher. We really believe in the life of Christ. We asked David Roper, we want you to write a series of studies on the life of Jesus and don't leave out any of it. Take us through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and put the life of Christ in chronological order. That's what we want to send to these national preachers. He did. He took two years to do it. And he got it done. And we put it together in two commentaries. It was about the first two commentaries that we published. Powerful life of Christ. There's nothing in the world quite like it. 
The best gift that you can give another human being is the life of Jesus. The best thing you can do for your family is to sit down with them and take them through the life of Jesus. The best thing a couple can do is to go through the life of Jesus. The best thing you can do for your neighbor or your cousin or your aunt or your uncle is to take them through the life of Jesus. And time is of the essence now. You may not have a lot of time. And I can just almost assure you, if you can get somebody to go through the life of Christ with you, most likely they're going to want to become a follower of the Christ. Try to set it up where Jesus is doing the teaching. You sit down with them and let Jesus take them through his earthly life. We're seeking to give it to the world. Maybe you'll want to help us do that. We're seeking to raise up 5,000 teachers in each tenth of the earth. And we're trying to cover three-tenths of the earth each year. If we can cover three-tenths of the earth this year, we did cover three-tenths of the earth last year. And you give us one more year to cover three-tenths of the earth and then maybe a portion of a year. We will have gone around the earth. Not as deeply as we want to, but we're trying. We're trying to take on the whole earth. And we want to do it in their language. And we want to give them what they really need to study. And that is the life of Jesus. I wanted to show you those two books. Maybe you've seen them. Maybe you've already gone through them. But they're about 1,100 pages. You put the two together in about 1,100 pages on the life of Jesus. There was a fourfold gospel that was done by J.W. McGarvey a number of years ago. I think it's 150 years old, isn't it, Dennis? It's not written as clearly now as it was when it was written. And so my students at Harding wouldn't read it. They didn't enjoy reading it. But they really enjoyed reading David Roper's treatment of the life of Jesus. He's easy to read. He's easy to translate. We have these two volumes translated into 22 languages beyond English. And that takes on about 70% of the population of the earth. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get that out to 70% of the population of the earth? They could read it. We've got it in languages that they understand. We just sat down with the global map. Let's put the global map up here. And we tried to divide it up into 10 parts. We wanted to have 800 million people in each part. Now, we were not able to abide by this rule as totally as we wanted to. But you can see that we really made an effort at dividing it up into uh, ten parts. And if we can take on three parts each year for three years, you give us another half of a year, and then we have tried to go around the earth. So here's what we've done. We've put together a teacher's box. If you want one, just come up to me and tell me, I want a teacher's box. These are the tools that we're giving people around the world that will help them to take others through the life of Jesus. And in the little box, it costs $52 to get the box done, and then the postage is on top of that. But it's a gem. It has two sets of the life of Christ in it, one for the teacher and one for the student. And just as soon as he gets the teacher's box, he's going to start taking somebody through the life of Jesus. And surely that person is going to eventually become a Christian. We're trying to do this with 5,000 teachers. So he gets two sets of the life of Christ. He gets seven salvation insight sheets. We believe that seven times our Lord talked about salvation in a very clear, distinct way. And if you come to a salvation insight in your study, you make sure that they understand that And probably pretty soon, the student will be asking you, can I become a Christian? Can I become a follower of Christ? We did throw in these boxes that are going into Latin America. Now, this is in Spanish, so if you're trying to read it and you don't know Spanish, that's the reason why. These are in Spanish. But these right here are the Salvation Insights. There are seven of them. And we made a little lesson on each one of them where you can take the student through these salvation insights, and that's a pretty good opportunity for them to learn the way of salvation, like Jesus talking to Nicodemus. 
And then those two purple ones over there would be the two books that we have entitled How to Become a Faithful Christian. We have a New Testament in each one of them. There's a New Testament in the back of that. And there would be about 200 to 300 pages on how you become a Christian, how you live as a Christian, and how you establish a church. That's what we call our teacher's box. And we've sent 5,000 into Latin America. We've sent 5,000 into, uh, excuse me, into Australia and the Philippines and uh, Britain and Scotland and Ireland. Those are three-tenths of the earth. And we've sent these out to all of those. We did do it in America. We tried to do it in America. We think we raised up only a 1,000 teachers of the life of Christ in America. We think we got 5,000 teachers in Latin America. We think we've got 5,000 teachers in the English 3, which would be Australia, the Philippines, and England, and Scotland, and Ireland. One man said, if you're trying to reach out into all the earth, I'll help you do it. He said, what do you need? And we told him, we need a warehouse. When you order 20,000 of these large books, you need to have a place to put them. And so he said, I'll help you to do that. This looks like it's really bigger than it actually is. It's just a barn. But we needed a place like this. We needed a place to put the books and organize the books as we prepared to send them out. Just as soon as we got it up, we got it full. I mean, it's just about full. I promised the staff of Truth for Today we would leave a circle around the inside of our building so you can walk. Are you exercising the way you should? Are you, Dennis? And you get out there and walk around that on your break. So we did keep that in place, but the rest of this would be boxes, boxes of commentaries, boxes of teacher's boxes that are ready to go overseas. If you had the opportunity to give somebody overseas some tools to be a teacher, what would you want to send? Wouldn't you want to send the life of Jesus? Why would anybody oppose that? Surely all of us would say, now that's what we want to do. 46% of the New Testament. Here's what we have done. Maybe you can see this from where you're seated. This is in green. And I went ahead and put up Sub-Saharan Africa because we did this uh, basically before the coronavirus came. But if you put it in, that looks like it's about half the population of the earth, or at least it's close to it. And this next year, this year, 2022, we want to take on China. We want to take on Germany. We want to take on Russia and the Ukraine. Now, we don't know how we're going to do it with Russia and the Ukraine. I will say a little bit about it before I finish this discussion. But we've got a good plan for China. We can't send paper to them. Can't get it in. But we've got a plan. We've got a good plan. And this calls for prayer. I wish I could just get the churches across the country to pray for us. One of these days, I'm going to go to a congregation to speak. And the people won't be there. They won't be in the pews. And I say, where are all the people? Well, they're back there praying for you. They're praying that you can come up with some way to get the gospel out into all the earth. That would thrill my heart. If you can't give anything, you can pray. You can pray every day that the world might hear the gospel. Well, here's the third thing, or, well, I want to say a word about America. We had uh, approximately, we have to be approximate on this, 35,000 brethren who have gone through the life of Jesus. And out of those 35,000, we think maybe 1,000 have developed into teachers, people who could take somebody else through the life of Jesus. Large number of small congregations have been encouraged by it, and we think maybe uh, 300 have been baptized into Christ. We have a good friend who is a gospel preacher, really. His wife works in our office. Her name is Liberty. And one day, about two weeks ago, his name is Dennis. Dennis called me, and he said, I need a baptistry. I said, well, I can help you get a baptistry. That's what you need. 
I've got a key to the church building. We've got a baptistry in it. He said, could you meet me at 540? And I said, yes, we'll be over there waiting on you. We were over there, and here comes Dennis, and he has a college student with him. I said, Dennis, who's going to be baptized? Well, this college student here. He introduced him to me. I said, well, how'd you teach him? He said, I was taking him through the life of Jesus. And he said, we went through what Jesus said to Nicodemus, a salvation insight. He said, I was pretty sure that he would think about it and then he would come to me. So we went through what Jesus said about how you become born again. And he said, just a little while ago, he called me and he said, 540. I'll be out of class at 540. And I'll be over there. And I want you to baptize me into Christ. I want to be born again. You don't have to ask them. You take them through the life of Christ. Really take them through the life of Christ. And they're probably going to ask you. When can I do this? When can I be a follower of the Christ? It really works. It really does work. All right. I want to go to number three right quickly. Number three would be we're trying to develop students. We're trying to raise up preachers. We're trying to raise up teachers. We're trying to raise up students. Our daughter, as you know, is a missionary in Nepal. And they have the privilege of going down into India now. And they also have the privilege at times in going over the Himalayas into China. It's a good place to be a missionary. They were in India and they went down to some place. I think it was Kerala, but... I'm not sure about that. I'm going to have to check on this. But they met a young man who was really well informed in the scriptures. And they said, how did you become so well informed in the scriptures? He said, I am studying through through the scriptures dot com. Well, that's our classroom in the cloud. We call it a classroom in the cloud. We're building a classroom in the cloud with fifteen hundred courses uh, each course being in 23 languages. We're a long ways off, but we do have uh, 470, somewhere around 470 courses in the cloud. And they're in all these different languages where anybody anywhere in the world, they're telling me that this is in 90% of the land area of the earth. So people who have access to the Internet, who have access to a computer can come online and can study through the Bible. Just think about how you've studied the Bible over the years. Think about the commentaries you've gone through. Think about the reading that you've done. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the Lord's Church had a way for people in Australia, people in Argentina, people in Guatemala and all these different countries could uh, come online to our online school and actually study through the Bible. You know how many of our commentaries we have translated into Chinese? We have all of our New Testament commentaries translated into Chinese. Never been done before. Where somebody in China, if you found out about it, could actually study through our commentaries on the New Testament in Chinese, in his own language. We're ready. And we want this classroom in the cloud to be a wonderful way of teaching people literally around the world. You've helped us a lot on this. I can't say enough about this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've got 52 of them now. Maybe it's 53. And we've got another one that's on the way to us that's going to be 53 maybe. And then we've got another one ready to send out. Send to the printer. We really believe in the commentary series. Now, I want to say a word to you about how the gospel went to the Ukraine. I was going to let you hear them sing, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. I had a student in my class from the Ukraine in 1992. He was from Donetsk, Ukraine. He came up to me after class. He said, I really believe that if you go overseas to the Ukraine, they will listen to you. And many of them would respond. So Susan and I put together a campaign. It was just a small campaign. We had 25 workers. Our four and our family went, so that would be uh, four, and then 21 beyond that. 
Uh, we didn't know what to do, but we got over there and we preached and we taught. We'd teach during the day and preach at night. We baptized 124. I believe Brother Johnny went with us on that. And we established the first church in the Ukraine. So far as I know, this was the first church, and that was in 1993. We had such a good response that we met in our living room in August of 1993, and we said, we've got to go back, but this time we've got to do better. We've got to have a bigger campaign than we've ever had before. So we decided that we would have a second campaign that would be actually 11 campaigns simultaneously. It had never been done, never been done, certainly in the Ukraine. We believed that they were ready for this. We had 11 preachers. We had 11 campaign directors. And we stationed these campaigns all over Donetsk, a city of about a million, where people could walk to the campaign sites. It was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. I don't guess I'll ever see anything like it again in my lifetime. But at the end of the 10 days, 1,545 had obeyed the gospel. We told them that we want to meet with you on Sunday afternoon. We're going to get on our buses. We're going back. We're going to leave 23 people with you to help you as you organize into churches of Christ. But we'd like to meet with you Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. And we're going to let all the preachers speak to you for a minute and a half each. And they will tell you what you need to do in order to be faithful to Jesus. They didn't all come. But we think we got a thousand. Now, I believe this is as far as I can go with this. But can you see that? Can you go up to the next one for me? You can't see that. We had poor cameras in those days. But we think we got a thousand. There were a few empty seats. But the Linen Palace would seat 1,200. And we had it almost full. It was unbelievable. I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. We came down to the last preacher, and he said, everything's been said that I think needs to be said, and what I'm going to do is just lead you in singing. I'm going to lead you into one song. We didn't know their songs. They didn't know ours. But we had taught them this wonderful song, God is so good. And they were going to sing it in Russian, and we would sing it in English. It was really wonderful. Hard to believe. I know that's hard to believe. But if you don't believe me, you just ask Susan. She was there. 1,545 who responded to the gospel. We started sending in Truth For Today, translated into Russian, to those who were going to be teaching, those who were going to be trying to preach. And we did that for 26 years. We were the only ones in our brotherhood who did it. EEM sent in Bibles to the schools 
Uh, but we were sending material to the preachers and to the teachers. And that helped them to grow strong. No telling how many copies of Becoming a Faithful Christian we sent in in Russian. But when the wars came, First War in 2014, we had to uh, quit sending it in to the Donetsk region. And then when the Second War came in 2021, we had to quit sending it in to uh, Russia itself. So I want to show you this. Here's what we are planning to do. Uh, this is our translator. Let's go to our next picture. This is Tatiana. She's still in the Ukraine. Uh, we send something to her every day. We talk to us, uh, talk to her uh, from us uh, every day, except on the weekends. And then we also uh, Zoom with her every once in a while. She's got her cell phone. That's all she's got. And sometimes she doesn't have electricity, so when she doesn't have electricity, uh, she will run on batteries. And then uh, when electricity comes back on, she'll plug in her computer and she'll plug in her cell phone, and that'll charge them back up, and that's the way she does it. But whenever we called and we Zoomed with her some time ago, she talked with us for uh, 40 minutes. Let's not go to... Okay, good. Uh, we talked for 40 minutes, and the first seven... She was just giving thanks. She said, I am the richest person in the world. She said, I haven't lost a single relative in the war. My husband's out on the front lines. My two sons are involved in the war. And I haven't lost to one of them. She said, God is my bomb shelter. And she had around her blanket. And she said, I've got a lot of these. And we just cover up with these and face the bitter cold. She said, I've got food and I've got water. And we've asked her, we want you to translate into Ukrainian. The church has nothing in Ukrainian. We want you to translate the life of Christ into Ukrainian. She's got the first book done. She's working on the second book. And then this is Eugene Let's come to our next picture. This is Eugene, who is a student over at the graduate school right now. And uh, the brethren are telling me that the Ukrainians who are in Poland and other places, they don't know Polish, and the Polish people don't know Ukrainian. And they are saying, well, we'll take care of them, we'll help them, but we don't know how to talk to them. So they link them up with Eugene. And Eugene teaches a Ukrainian class three times a week as he's trying to teach them Bible and prepare them to go back in, hopefully, one day, whenever the war is over. So Eugene and maybe a teacher from Bear Valley are joining together, and they're building a virtual preacher school or teacher school where uh, these people can study the Bible and get ready to go back to home. I don't know why we wouldn't want to do these things. I can't imagine why the church would not want to raise up 5,000 teachers in a tenth of the earth. And just keep it up until we've raised up 5,000 teachers in all of the tents of the earth. Turn them loose to teach the Word of God. If they have to, they can just read it with them. At least they would have some kind of opportunity to go through the life of Jesus. Why shouldn't the churches of Christ in America jump at an opportunity like this? Well, I believe those with good hearts will do that. And God bless us as we try to do everything that Jesus has asked us to do. If you're not a Christian tonight, you can become one. We're ready. We're ready to teach you. If you need teaching, we're ready to help you in any way. And we've got an invitation song ready to sing as we invite you to come. If you're unfaithful, come back. This is the time to be alive in America. A lot of wonderful things are happening. Many more wonderful things I just know are going to happen. If the church will just be the church. And if Christians will just be real Christians. Shall we stand and sing?